So, welcome back to another on the table. Uh, yeah, slightly different camera angle. Uh, I suspect you've probably guessed what the topic is uh, today. It's the uh, ZX81, whose 40th birthday was yesterday, March the 5th, 2021. Uh, but in our family, uh, my son has a, a birthday on the same day, so that uh, took priority to the videos today. And in real terms, I've been uh, <clears throat> I've been reading through my diary. Uh, this is the last diary I ever kept in 1981, and we'll find out why as part of the story develops. And um, I was very early on decided I was going to get a, a ZX80 after attending Mr. Arnold's uh, club on February the 20th. I decided I was going to get a ZX80 kit. I mean, seen the glossy adverts and actually played with one and you know they just the, the electronics and computer magazines were full of that sort of thing so um so in real terms the 40th birthday of me is actually a little bit later because uh, i didn't actually become aware of the presence of a, a zx80 uh, one as a as a product uh, until quite a bit later in the month i think so uh, i think my dad probably saw uh, one so we're talking at march the 19th really today i definitely decided to buy one of the new zx81s as soon as I got in this evening, I did my homework. I must have been uh, really enthusiastic to get one. Uh, here we go. Uh, so, what have we got here then? <coughs> uh, laid out is my original ZX81, uh, which I built from a kit, and there's a bit of a story behind that which we'll go into. Um, I moved on to a much larger uh, cased uh, version with a better keyboard, and I built a keyboard for that in the meantime. Uh, hopefully which you'll be seeing a photograph of with um, my second project the uh, I really got into the ZX81 I mean you know the reason there's no <laughs> diary entry is it's just empty after a certain period of time is pretty much after I got the computer working so uh, that was the end of that but uh, I did do um, an O-level electronics project as well with it which is the ZX81 music box so hopefully that'll be the topic of a a video by itself so I uh, managed to find the, uh, the um, booklet on its construction and in fact the original uh, project proposed as well from the is it from the uh, AEB's examining board for my O-level so uh, <clears throat> and obviously then the, the second project I did with which is my technology uh, O-level is a, a chart recorder mains powered I mean probably wouldn't get away with off the safety these days but um, again, I've managed to find the uh, the project notes and the engineering diagrams that were done uh, on how it was uh, all constructed uh, and all the research notes um, about how one would be put together. And uh, hopefully it's got the listings in it and some, you know, pretty well uh, you know, details of those. Don't you? And they were all inspired by uh, Personal Computer World, which uh, ran this uh, article called... Um, Control your own substation with the ZX81, which talked about the techno technomatic uh, I.O. port that you can hook things up to, which is what that's designed for. Now, I can't find my technomatic I.O. board, but um, I do have um, a later one, which is the Maplin uh, one, which has got a little mini expansion bus on it as well. So, uh, again, we'll be looking at that. Um, <clears throat> I've also got an um, uh, original uh, RAM pack, obviously, and a printer. Both of which are in need of repair. It's fairly common to print as the uh, band goes on them. And the RAM packs are notoriously for, um, because they've got some uh, voltage uh, rails on them, a bit like the Spectrum, uh, they do tend to blow the RAM chips. And I unfortunately discovered, uh, that preparing for this video, that my memo pack 16K, which uh, fits on the back nicely, as Rick Dickinson probably originally designed the RAM pack, has got a fault. So I've started to do a little bit of work to. Uh, uh, remove its connectors and, and have a little good look at it because the connector had actually smashed and broken so I suspect it was probably not aligning properly so we probably have the same similar problem with the rams on that so we'll explore fixing that. All give, else given up I'll probably put a, an internal 16k memory on the, on the this one which is uh, the second board I owned. Um, I got a few photos from the restoration of the very original kit I built um, which uh, was uh, it came arrived um, didn't work managed to get a video display which should have indicated the ULA was running but I wouldn't have known that at the time and after consultation with uh, Sinclair's helpline they uh, it was a bit too hot to touch they said well that's working okay then so uh, we need to send it back to us to have a look and it did take quite a lot of weeks with phone calls documented in the diary to to try and get it back and all I was left with was my 
my manual that I'd had with it to go over and pour with every little note on it and as you can see it's uh, it's uh, starting to, to fall apart but it's still here and it's full of my little notes uh, where I really took everything I could about that machine. Um, came back eventually with probably a faulty Z80 uh, which wasn't my fault so I didn't charge the repair but it, it does mean I think it was, uh, it was quite a few months where I still kept a diary but uh, I think it was uh, quite a bit um, yeah, I've started work on a hex keypad, so we're into May here now, so uh, it sounds like, um, oh there we go, June the 5th, I'm writing this on Sunday as I've been rather engrossed in my computer, which arrived while I was in school. I had to repair a broken resistor and a snap lead on the modulator before it worked, but as it was a faulty CPU, they didn't charge me. <laughs> they even sent it back with a break and a problem on it. And the next one is, this morning I was totally engrossed in my computer. I managed to get a moving missile base and we developed, Mike came up and we developed a simple game um, uh, and he didn't leave until nine o'clock of grief so uh, there's quite a lot of activity then from June onwards and there's late entries and then they get very very short and then there's a couple of days of half-hearted attempts and then absolutely nothing in the diary for a long time until December the 6th and tut tut I haven't written a diary entry for months but it would have been mostly about my computer. Yes, I'm still nuts on it. The news is I managed to get a computer club going. So uh, I mentioned uh, meeting up with uh, Worm, the pet owner, and I've ordered a ZX81 printer and my reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder is broken, which is why I was using initially it's the only thing I could get to work to save to tape. Um, so I'm ordering a special tape recorder for my ZX81. And I've started an electronics course with Mr. Chukas at the college. So that would have been the one that gave the, the old level electronics eventually. So when I sit, that's the last time I ever kept a diary. So uh, I'll be the end of that. Anyway, we shall uh, explore some of this now as the, the video goes on and future videos as I, I get all this equipment working again. Obviously, we've got a few other things on the, uh, the desk here, which is, uh, is a little uh, 3K RAM pack with the stacked up chips and the chip selects off, which uh, I think does actually work. So uh, we'll, we'll get that going again, uh, perhaps, and, uh, and show it working. Um, typical uh, sort of construction from back in the day with the two bits of error board either side so it'll be interesting to look at with more detail. Um, I've also got another one of these um, uh, I.O. cards from Maplin, the ZX81 input output port ready to build. I just need the PIO chip so I'll be an interesting little kit to build up. We can have twin I.O. ports on it if I add a new expansion connector on the end. So uh, a little bit of procurement and work to do there but uh, we'll get it all going again I'm sure. Um, this ZX81, the boxed one, was a, a, a modern purchase. It's priced at $19.95. Um, I, I don't know why I paid for it, but it's uh, basically a fully boxed ZX81. Uh, just because I never actually had a boxed one. I think uh, both of these were in plain brown, brown envelopes. Um, obviously the DKtronics keyboard. And we got a couple of the cassettes from it. The Sinclair Tape 1, um, which we'll perhaps have a little play next and uh, load some games. Um, screen kit, uh, we've got a, a Bug Bytes ZXDB um, disassembler um, and monitor and a ZXAS from Bug Byte Assembler which I eventually bought. Um, I should point out that was a much later later purchase. Um, I initially learned all my Z80 from, um, I mean some of you probably know about this, but the, the character set in the back of the manual uh, actually contains the Z80 instructions and I've written in some of the ones that are missing as well. Um, and I, I really learned it all. I did eventually invest in a, a copy of uh, Ronnie Zax's program in the Z80, uh, which is probably not doing even as well as the, the manual, but uh, it's been a treasured possession since uh, 1981, so uh, I uh, pretty much uh, it's been the Bible for programming. And uh, also, obviously, the lovely understanding your uh, ZX81 ROM from Dr. Ian Logan, so uh, um, obviously the manual from the, uh, the printer. So it's quite a little uh, haul and collection of interesting items to go through. Um, one other thing that, that might be worth people being aware of is uh, obviously because this was an early ULA, um, they don't generate what's known as the back porch uh, signal. So basically the TV will struggle to, to work with it. An old TV like this Sony, which is contemporary, would work fine. It didn't really worry about the back porch signal. Set in the white, you've got a control on the side which has to do it. 
Um, this now has a modern ULA replacement in it because unfortunately the regulator was faulty and it uh, we I fitted one of these little uh, ZX8 uh, uh, CCBs. They are brilliant um, as a composite out device and um, there's one in this as well which is ideal uh, because this is another early ULA one but not as early as that was um, and unfortunately after this was fitted it ran for a short time but because of the over voltage on the uh, uh, the uh, med modulator of uh, the regulator which I didn't notice um, it uh, actually unfortunately burnt the ULA out so it's got a modern ULA in it and it's got a new keyboard as well because the keyboard tails have failed um, in fact it's uh, actually a newer case it's the case off of this one the original case from my original board has a lot of holes hacked in it which you can see in the photograph of the chart recorder um, which this is the software for uh, carefully recorded on cassette. Um, it, I had built my own Maplin based um, expansion keyboard uh, for that. So um, I just hacked a few holes in the case and a reset switch on the top corner. So it's a sort of, it's a combination, but I've still got the original case as well. So um, I think that about covers it. Um, the TV's actually stood on one of those lovely um, chopping boards you can buy glass ones with a, what is I think an American uh, ZX81 motherboard. So uh, quite appropriate and a cassette full of some of the software I wrote back in the day um, didn't really buy a lot of software um, uh, apart from the ones for tools but I did write quite a bit and uh, one we actually did was a microprocessor simulator which uh, might be very interesting to look at which uh, I did use in some educational context as well so quite a few interesting little projects to try I think um, but I think the obvious thing is we're going to put the camera somewhere nice and uh, let's take a look at the uh, actually loading a game on the ZX81, shall we? So we're going to uh, hopefully load a, a cassette now onto the ZX81. Um, I'm not using the original uh, uh, lead because this set doesn't actually have a UHF input. It has some screw terminals, so I've got a lead permanently made up for using it with older machines. Uh, you can see the power supply unit, which is lovely. It's branded with Sinclair as well. Um, one thing I did actually note as well is a, a bit of software I wrote before I even managed to buy those with the ZXBG the hex monitor <laughs> all typed up neatly on my bit of card. So uh, <laughs> here we go with my typewriter before I had a printer. So let's uh, get it going. We'll warm the Sony up. Okay, and hopefully we should get a signal when we plug the ZX81 in. Yep, there we go, there's our little cape, and uh, we're going to take our little cassette out, which has got an uh, uh, Orbit Sniper Media on it, so uh, we check the task, and then we stick it in, here we go, uh, set the, the volume up to about three quarters, and load, symbol share quote, quote, and enter, and there we are, off go the lines. And there we are. So what exciting game have we got to look forward to on the inlay? We've got our little instruction sheets. Uh, orbit, 20 seconds. Dynamic graphics display a spacecraft in orbit round a star. This sounds exciting. Six to move inwards and speed up, seven to move outwards and slow down. Excellent. And then we've got Sniper as well. And Meteors. Nothing as yet playing. Okay, freeze frame. Well, edit, in fact. Uh, I did my best to try and edit out some of the, the bits that are going to come up, but uh, uh, this is the ZX81. Um, tape loading, it worked fine in pre-production and everything. Never worked with children or old computers. Still, um, quite a few people have commented they like to see the failures on the video, so... Uh, and I know a lot of you do find that interesting. So in the tradition of good quality filming, I've moved those to the end as an almost an outtake. Um, so we're just going to jump over all the troubles and we're going to get as far as actually loading a programme. So we finally get to the third programme on the tape uh, and we're going to have a little game of meteors. So let's see what it goes to. Well, let's try the last one, meteors then. This tape may need a little bit of time on the radiator to give it a bit of a...
looks more promising. There we go. So hopefully if I press run, you notice that the screen flickers and you only see three lines. That's because most of the memory is used by the... There we go. And of course you've got the classic flashing as it tries to fly. So Because uh, it can only update the screen. You've got to dodge the meteors. Oops, I'm going to lose a life there. I'll get through that gap, I think. So five and eight controls. So I fly past. So this was quality gaming. Shame we missed Sniper. <laughs> I'm doing okay, so well, three. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna crash straight. This should lose all my lives. Yeah, and I'm gone. And of course, we're back to 53 light years. Whatever that means. So there we go. The ZX81 tape loading experience recreated from 40 years ago with a, a lovely WH Smith's cassette deck. Excellent. Have we got the mic in here in the right place? Yeah, black, pink, grey. This was great fun back in the day, just like the ZX81. So let's give it another go, a little bit of higher volume. Starts, isn't it? So I'm plugging a microphone. And we restart it as well. Make sure that's in the ear socket correctly. Yes, it is. Okay, and the volume is fully up. Yep, there we go. All right, then let's give it another go. Load. I mean, the old girl is 40 years old, so what do we expect? Still nothing. Have we got sound? No, there's nothing on there. wasn't fully up, maybe it was fully down. That would be silly of me, wouldn't it? Definitely audio on the tape. Oh, I haven't started yet. Long leader. Patience. It's not seen, is it? Let's try using the black wire then. Well, I'm not promising. Maybe the grey fault has gone faulty. You probably won't see half of this on the video. <laughs> oh dear. Still nothing. That hasn't actually started yet. Patience. There we go. Excellent. Well, that's what a ZX81 should look like loading. Yep. 
There we go. And we're back to the K. Now that assumes maybe. No, did we have a was that a, an error? Yep. Yep, nothing there. So Okay, we have to have another little go. About fifth time lucky, maybe? Once you got things right, they were actually quite reliable at saving and loading, as long as you had a reasonable cassette tag. And of course, it's the same. Classic W. H. Smith ones. I think everybody got their cassette decks from W. H. Smith. So I got three different models from W. H. Smith. We're looking for the zero. Okay, we really are. Which is a successful load on the ZX eighty one. This of course is only a 1k game because my 16k round pack is like, oh, zero, 00, oh yeah, I think that means okay. So if I do it, press return, do we get a... Nope, nothing. Oh, it's crashed. Okay. Well, that look, did look a bit more promising, didn't it? So. there's no sound at all there's no clue Ooh, that was a crash straight away let's try backing the volume down a little bit this does work I've, uh, when I originally restored it I did try this so it's just a matter of finding the sweet spot. Could be the noise as well because the cassette deck's quite close to the ZX81 and the TV. We might have to move them a little bit apart. Well, it does seem to indicate an okay. But nothing. Hmm. Okay, well let's try the next game. Be sniper. Mm, immediate crash. I'm going to move the tape deck away a little bit as well, just in case we get any noise. from the mains a little bit and the speaker Using the tape counter, obviously, I managed to rewind a little bit. Always nerve-wracking waiting for a machine to load. That doesn't look very promising. We didn't end up with the OK. Nope. Okay, let's go hands-free and uh, retry that uh, first game on the tape. Just out of interest. I'll rewind the cassette and we shall see. 
they've not did the last one fine at this level. Like I said, they were pretty reliable once you actually got the levels right on the tape deck. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. It didn't work so here we go it was worth a try wasn't it while we're here we can uh, take a little bit closer look at the uh, chart recorder so uh, paper feed button and the hookup uh, built so uh, the relay which has uh, got the mains on it at least I use some tape to save myself from getting electrocuted and the control for the 9 volt battery which uh, I have no idea what that probably powers some part of it I probably didn't build a power unit for it could have done it from the mains, I suppose. Maybe we do that when we do it. But it's all built from a carner with an old stepper motor that's been saved. Looking a bit rusty. Still got some paper on it. Um, it seems the pen arm is missing. So uh, we might need to dig the Meccano box out and look at the original diagrams to reconstruct the pen arm. Uh, so the paper feeds there, but we've got no uh, no structure for the, uh, the pen assembly. So that'll be a bit more of a project to do for a separate video, I think. But uh, worth looking at. 